Hi there, it's Councillor Glenn Gower, and this morning I am at Rubicon Park, so let me situate this for you. Rubicon Park is on Rouncey and Rubicon, and it's between Cope Drive and Fernbank, so at the very uh, south part of the Fernbank community. Uh, as you can see, it's got a bit of a, a, a pirate ship theme. There's a yellow submarine just behind me. I think one of the most uh, creative parks we have in the community. Uh, so a good place to explore if you've got kids and looking for a different place to play today. There's a soccer field over there, some swings, picnic shelter. And if you look just beyond, you see some white walls going up. That is the new Fern Bank Public Elementary School. And uh, also a kind of an interesting thing to check out. It's at the corner of Cope and Rouncey. Uh, it's slated to open in fall 2022, so this fall. And um, the way they're building it is each piece of the wall goes up in its entirety and then they're kind of jacked up with some long iron poles. Uh, very different way of, of construction. Similar kind of construction happening just down the road at Robert Grant and Cope where they're building the new public high school. Uh, so if you're in the area looking for something to explore and have a look at, these uh, new, new schools under construction might be something interesting. And check out Rubicon Park while you're here. I've got a whole bunch of updates today. Uh, I wanted to start local and then I'll go up to kind of a citywide level. Local, some really big news. Robert Grant Avenue this week, City Council approved the next phase of construction from Abbott Street to Hazel Dean Road. Uh, there's a financing agreement in place with the developer to put shovels in the ground this fall, which is super important. Uh, that project is uh, is behind the original timeline and it's an, an incredibly important transportation link uh, so that uh, Robert Grant, it'll be now connected from Fernbank all the way to Hazel Dean Road and then future phases will take it up all the way to the Queensway. So it's a roadway, uh, it's a bike path, it's a sidewalk and future route for transit as well. So a really important transportation link in the community. Very happy to see approval, unanimous support from council on that one. So that's good. Uh, locally, we have an event coming up, a Zoom event on Tuesday evening. We're doing a webinar or a, an online meeting about affordable housing, the city's affordable housing strategy. I've got the city's director of affordable housing joining me at 7 p.m. on Zoom. So you can find that information on my website. Hope you can join us for that. A reminder, we are seeing warmer weather. I've actually seen a lot of people walking dogs and uh, out with strollers in the community. There are more people out and about, more bikes in the community. If you are a driver, please uh, slow down and be aware of your surroundings and watch out for the other users on the road. Um, slowing down is a big one. We're in that awkward time of year between when the snow goes away and when the city installs some of the traffic calming measures like the flex stakes, it's when we see the most speed complaints at any time of the year. So uh, please take care and make sure you're following the posted speed limits on the roads. And by the way, if you see someone who is driving excessively fast or blowing through a stop sign, please report it to Ottawa Police. You can go to ottawapolice.ca slash report to do that. Um, cleaning up the Capitol, registration continues. Really hoping we can get to someone to look after every single one of our parks in the community so maybe you can get together with your family or with some neighbors or with your workplace and adopt a park and set up a, an afternoon we can go out and do a cleanup the city will provide garbage bags and gloves and everything you need to do that cleanup and you can sign up at ottawa.ca or find more information on my website we also have nominations continuing for our Stittsville Volunteer Award. So if you know someone who's making a difference in our community, please consider nominating them. You can find more information at glengower.ca slash volunteer. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, I guess it's a, it's a provincial thing, but it, it uh, applies to something, an issue we're having locally. Um, the province this week uh, announced that they're going to put tougher penalties on developers who behave in an unethical way. There's a code of ethics for housing developers in uh, Ontario. And what they wanna do is up the fines to $100,000 for an infraction and, and have those fines escalate for multiple infractions. But also they could remove the license of that builder for up to two, two years, I believe, in case of violation. And I mention this because um, one of the um, uh, code of conduct breaches that would apply is something that we see uh, right now in Stittsville, there's a development at Hazeldean and Victor. Um, 
almost 100 homeowners who found out earlier this year that the company is, is basically uh, declaring bankruptcy. It's more complicated than that, but for simplicity's sake, uh, going through the bankruptcy process. And uh, people who put down a deposit on their homes two years ago are now being told that those homes won't be finished and they're being given their deposit back. Um, it's completely unfair to the buyers and they're there's uh, dozens and dozens of families just left in the lurch, hoping to close this year in their homes and they're not able to do so. So I hope that this uh, more stringent penalty from, uh, from the province will help to stop, discourage, prevent that kind of thing from happening in the future. Uh, hopefully it'll be retroactive so that it can be applied in this case as well. Uh, if you check out my website, and I hope you do, it's glengower.ca, and uh, almost every single day uh, we post new information there. So just a few things posted this week for your information. We have a list of the 2022 hazardous waste depots, including uh, a new date, a new location at Canadian Tire Center parking lot this year. Uh, we have a post about traffic impacts, where you can go to find the latest information about construction and road closures affecting streets in Ottawa and in Stittsville. Uh, there's information about a Save Our Pets emergency decal. It's a new program from uh, Ottawa Fire and, uh, and the Humane Society. And uh, they want to make it easy to identify homes where there are pets inside in the case of emergency like a fire. And you can also find information about a city program providing re rebates for people improve, who improve rain water runoff. So a really good program. All that information is on my website. Uh, moving more to a citywide level, we did have our city council meeting this week, the first one that we've done in person in over two years. It was really good to be back. Uh, we uh, presented Zexi Lee with a Mayor's City Builder Award in recognition of the important legal work that she did during the occupation downtown last month uh, to uh, achieve an injunction to stop some of the, uh, the noise and illegal activities. So uh, it was a great moment to be able to thank Zexi Lee. I want to remind you about a citywide waste survey that's happening. We are running out of room at our landfill and we need to do more to divert waste out of the landfill. There's a number of recommendations on what we could do to uh, achieve that and uh, need your feedback to uh, uh, so that the city staff can then put together a final plan. That's at engage.ottawa.ca. And uh, on Thursday this week, as part of planning committee, I was glad to see the committee vote unanimously for a new master plan for the Manor Park neighborhood. Now this is pretty far from Stittsville. It's in the East End, um, kind of near uh, Montreal Road, uh, Hemlock, Saint Laurent. So in the East End, uh, I think Aviation Parkway, kind of that area. Uh, but what it is, it's a 50 year master plan to build 4,000 new homes, up to 4,000 new homes and apartments. And um, very impressed to see the builder come forward voluntarily to guarantee a minimum percentage of those homes will be affordable homes and also to protect existing tenants who live in a number of homes that are going to be redeveloped. So uh, a really forward thinking developer and uh, some good protection for tenants and good to see approval of that. It really sets a model, sets, a, sets the bar higher for any other builder who's going to be doing this kind of large scale project and where there's issues around uh, uh, rent evictions or, or tenant relocation. Um, so um, what else do I have? Okay, so this week, some events. Um, office hours. I'm doing open office hours this week, Thursday, from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at my office at Cardell Rec. Uh, we did that just on Friday, yesterday. It was great to have people drop by. Uh, someone dropped by with a, an old copy of the Stittsville News from the early 1980s, so that was kind of interesting to see. Um, coming up on Easter weekend, on the Saturday, we are going to do an Easter skate, a free skate for families, for residents. Uh, come out and join us for that. We'll be sharing some information soon, along with the registration page, so, so you can sign up and get a spot. Um, the Ottawa West Artists, they have a new exhibit up at Cardell Rec, so if you're in at the Rec Center, uh, check out all of the beautiful artwork on the walls from Stittsville and Canada artists, people in the West End. And, and finally, if you have an event, I'd love to hear about it. If you're organizing a fundraiser, a community event, something happening that you'd like to share with the community, uh, maybe I can talk about it here, maybe I can share it in my email newsletter, but just send me an email, glenn.gower at ottawa.ca. I'd love to hear about it, maybe I can drop by too and say hello. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, thank you for listening on your favorite podcast app. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll talk to you next Saturday. Take care.